This is an eastern gray squirrel. It's the most common squirrel in North America. I named this one Chucky. I'm gonna be eating this today. I just finished skinning Chucky the squirrel. I wanna keep this video PG, so if you wanna watch the video of me skinning this, check out the video up in the corner here or check down in the comments below. I'll share a playlist of all the videos of me processing animals in general. So opossums, rabbits, squirrels, even my chickens that I raised. So check that out. But yeah, this time I did a pretty good job, I feel like. Everything is fully intact and it looks really nice. There's a few patches and stuff like that because the fur kind of got pulled off. And I actually really want to tan this. So I might actually use some egg yolk and tan this and turn this into a pelt. And uh, I'd like some ideas on what I could make out of this. Should I make like a bag, like a small bag or like a pouch? Or should I sew this together with the other squirrel and then make something larger? Maybe like a glove or a mitten or something? I don't know, but give me some ideas. What do you think? <laughs> Just finished processing and cleaning everything. So here are the quarters. Here are the hind legs. These are the front legs. We've got the liver. The two kidneys. And the heart. So I want to clarify that in a survival situation or in a situation where you're out in the bush, or maybe even camping, I would suggest actually using the body and actually keeping the skin on. The best way to get every single piece of nutrition and benefit from an animal like this in a survival situation is to also eat the skin. So in order to do that, you would actually do one of two things. You would either scald the fur so that it could just peel off. Basically, you could just pull it off and clean off everything. Or what you can do is a lot of Hmong people do this. They take it and they just burn the fur off. They just burn everything off. They put it over a fire, burn it. And once it's burnt off, that's when they gut it and clean it and everything. And then from there, you cook it like that. You cook it whole like that with the skin on. The skin provides more protein, collagen, and a bunch of minerals and nutrients that is really good also. And a lot of fat also. The skin has lots of fat. It's something that you really, really need in a survival situation. And I'm sure there's tons and tons of like collagen in the hands and feet also. So you can cook that down and get all of that in a soup or something too, which would be really good. I haven't done that before, but I plan to eventually. But for now, I'll stick with something like this and I don't need to complicate things for now. So I just started processing the second squirrel, the one with the really short tail. And uh, I don't think I'm eating that one. It had these weird tumor-like things that was embedded in its flesh. I opened it up and I checked its organs and everything and it looked fine. Uh, but I'm not that desperate. I don't really need to eat that second squirrel uh, because I was planning on getting rid of them anyways, you know, so losing a tiny bit of meat that was on it isn't that big a deal. So yeah, I am not eating that squirrel. But yeah, that's it. Let's get started. Let's get cooking. All right, so it's time to prep all the ingredients. I want to do all this prep because I tend to overestimate how much ingredients I want. Because oftentimes I just throw things together without a recipe and I end up making more food than I can eat. And as many of you know, I don't like wasting my food and I like to utilize everything as I possibly could. And so I don't want to make like a pot full of food and then not be able to finish all of it because I end up leaving it for a long time and I don't eat it and it goes bad. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I want to measure things out. And so that way I don't end up putting more than I really need. <laughs> so this right here, these are smoked turkey bones. It has some meat on it, but I'm only using this as sort of like a flavoring ingredient to give the soup a smoky sort of flavor. Got some leeks. Based on my understanding, I'm only going to be using most of the white part of it. I've never even made or eaten leeks before, so this is going to be interesting. 
I might use some of the inner parts that are soft. Oh, it's like a mild onion. It's not bad. Oh, never mind. It's not mild. Oh, wow. That kicks, <coughs> that kicks you in the face hard. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to save this. <coughs> okay. There you go. So this should be plenty. Just chop it up. Just like this. I've got some potatoes here. I believe these are called gemstone potatoes. I'm just gonna slice them in half. Just like that. They don't need to be uniform or anything. I'm just chopping them up so that they're smaller pieces. And I've got some mushrooms. I wasn't originally going to add mushrooms, but I bought them anyways. And so I thought that I might as well add them. So look at that. These are king oyster mushrooms. And these are enoki mushrooms. So I don't need all of this. It's a lot here. So I'm gonna cut this off. And I think I'll only use about that much. So I'm just gonna split this up a little bit. Put in the bowl. And this. There you go, cut in half. There you go. See, even with all these right now, even though I'm portioning things, it's beginning to look like a lot of food. There you go, see, this bowl here has most of the ingredients. I need to add one more thing, and it's the squirrel meat. <laughs> and now I have some bone broth, I've got some garlic, I've got creme fraiche, and I have some dill, like fresh dill. And I'll add those afterwards. So this, we're just gonna put it in the pot and get started. I'm about to cook myself a squirrel soup. But first, have you ever heard of a brand called Staub? It's a high-end brand that can get really, really expensive. But what if I told you there was a company that reaches out to the manufacturers of these high-end brands to make products that doesn't have any branding on them to cut you hundreds of dollars of savings? This is a Dutch oven pot by the company called Italic. And the quality of this is incredible. Something like this coming from Staub would cost me well over like $500. But from Italic, this only costs $100. Actually less than that, it's like $90. But I've been spending the last couple of months actually using it. I've been cooking with it, I've been frying with it, I've even baked bread in it. And I have to say, this is this is probably one of the best like cast iron Dutch ovens that I've ever used. And it's been awesome. There has been no chipping or flaking of the ceramic coating. And the coating itself also is so well done. And it cleans incredibly well also. And so I'm going to be using this to cook my squirrel stew today. All right, let's throw in all the ingredients. So here is the squirrel quarters, just the front and hind legs. There you go, a little bit of garlic. Here's the enoki mushrooms and king oyster mushrooms here. Then you got the carrots and leeks and potatoes. And the rest are the smoked turkey bones. There you go, all of that. We're gonna add a little bit of salt.
MSG, and some fresh cracked pepper. And this is a really cool cast iron sort of grinder. So it has a lid like this. This comes off. Now you've got fresh pepper here. Pop it in there. Put this over it. Close it now. And you just ground up a bunch of fresh pepper. There you go. I also have creme fraiche and fresh dill. I'm gonna add these afterwards. And I've got some bone broth. This is a mushroom chicken bone broth. And you can use whatever you'd like. You could probably use water also. But broth is a lot better to use. All right. Ooh, look at that color. So I knew that wasn't going to be enough. So I got some more here. This is a different brand. I love this. This is called Zoop. Yeah, it's really good soup. So pour this in. There you go, just to kind of flood it. All right. And that'll be perfect. I might as well use all of it. And there you go. All right, let's get the fire started. You remember these strike of fire giant matches? I'm gonna be using this today. Super convenient and quick. Right, the fire is roaring now. Put the larger pieces in now. There you go. Now I'm just gonna let this cook until it comes to a boil. And then I'll lower the heat and let this simmer for like an hour or so. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna clean up and put things away. And I will see you when this is done. All right, it looks like it started boiling. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Okay, so we're gonna turn down the heat. There you go. Turn down the heat. And I'm gonna let this simmer now on low heat for a little bit longer here. All right, it's been simmering for a while now. <laughs> there you go. Okay, let's try it. God, that's amazing. Oh my God. Yeah, this is good. This is gonna be good. All right, so I am going to actually make it creamy by adding some creme fraiche. Give it a little bit more pop. i turn this down a little bit more. There's creme fraiche. Oh, just a chunk like that. And I'm just going to break that up and mix it all in the soup. Just add a little bit more. This tastes amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that creme fraiche made this so much better. And this tastes a whole lot more like a clam chowder style soup now. 
is very good. I knew that it was going to be good, but I wasn't expecting it to be this good after adding that creme fraiche. This is amazing. All right, so now the last bit. I'm gonna add some fresh dill. I'm gonna go wash this first though. So adding the dill adds sort of like a fresh look to it because it adds more color. See, it adds a bright color to it because of how dull it looks after cooking down everything. And now that's it. You just take this off of the heat now. There you go. There you go. <laughs> And the dill also adds more aromatics. Uh, so yeah, aromatics and just visually, it looks, oh my God, holy crap, look at that. This smells and just looks absolutely amazing. All right, see, look at this. So here's the squirrel. There's the squirrel meat. We've got the mushrooms, potatoes, the carrots, and then we've got the bones here. <laughs> Gives it a really nice smokiness. Let's scoop up some soup. Grab myself some squirrel, potatoes, carrots, Another piece of squirrel. This is the front leg. I'm gonna keep this on the wood stove. The wood stove isn't as hot anymore, so it'll work out. Let's eat. <laughs> That addition of dill is perfect. Oh. <sighs> Squirrel soup. <laughs> oh man, this is so good. Gotta eat some of the squirrel now. So here's the hind leg. Oh, wow. That is the best squirrel that I've ever had. I've eaten squirrel several times now, and this is the best way so far, best yet. The meat is super tender. I thought it was going to be like really tough, but it isn't. Mmm. Wow. The meat though does taste different. You can tell it is a different type of meat. It doesn't really taste like chicken. It actually reminds me more of, of duck. It tastes like duck. That's interesting. Wow. Okay, let's try the other piece. This is the front shoulder leg. Yeah. That was really good. Holy crap. I was not expecting <laughs> this entire thing to be as good as it is. <laughs> the meat is incredibly tender. For some reason, I kept thinking like, this is going to be really, really like chewy or tough, you know? I would, I would think, you know, squirrel would be like chewy and tough, but it's not. It's really good. Wow. Hmm. I might have to catch some more squirrels. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Hmm. And the soup too, holy crap. Hmm. This reminds me of those like cream of mushroom, maybe even cream of chicken, or maybe even a clam chowder. Like that's what this kind of reminds me of, but it 
taste a lot different. But like the fresh dill adds a new layer of sort of depth to it. If I were to change one thing about this, I would probably not have put in the enoki mushrooms. Not because they're not good, but because it kind of tangles everything up and it kind of clumps everything together. And I don't like that. It kind of tangled up all the dill into one like clump and like the enoki mushrooms it has a good texture and everything it, i feel like it just isn't suited for like this soup i think like all the other pieces they're all like chunks and stuff and they're solid large chunks but the enoki mushrooms it's sort of like almost like a noodle that kind of tangles up on itself i'm impressed with this i'm really happy with this this turned out really, really good. I'm gonna eat some more soup. <laughs> Squirrel soup. Oh, it's boiling here again. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, see? All the enoki mushrooms kind of tangle up and it makes a mess of things. <laughs> yeah. Like the enoki mushrooms, they're good. You know, it just, I feel like it doesn't fit this soup very well all right let's pull it off the heat now Ooh, hot there you go all right oh man when it started boiling over the fire again I think it's condensed it down a little bit more. It's a little thicker now. <clears throat> wow, that is so good. Such a creamy soup. Like that creme fraiche really brought out the soup's um, like flavors a lot more. I hear something. A mouse or something must have gotten trapped. It sounds like the trap is being pushed. <laughs> well, I'll check later. That neighbor's dog sees me and, and she's just barking at me. <laughs> so since catching the two squirrels, I have noticed that other squirrels are coming into the shed. And so I've been trying to catch them, but I haven't been successful. I'm still cleaning up and everything too. I need to set up the live traps again up on the, on the loft because I think that's like the surefire way of, of like actually capturing them because there's a, like a large rolled up old blanket up there that's rolled up in like a garbage bag. But the squirrels, I think, has chewed through the garbage bag and made like that area their den or something. I'm just going to keep trying to catch these squirrels. I'm not trying to close off the shed just yet. I'm trying to pretty much lure in all of the squirrels that knows about the stuff in my shed, you know? I want to know how many squirrels knows about this so that I can catch all of them and kill and probably maybe even eat them because yeah, they're really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I catch like any other squirrels in the meantime, while I still have the soup, I'm just going to butcher them and then toss the meat into the soup and just cook it up again. I think that'll be really good. <laughs> the, the fresh dill really, really comes through. And it's so good. All right, that's good. That was incredibly satisfying. So next time, if you see a squirrel, think of me <laughs> and watch this video again. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for today's video. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all of your likes, your comments, your support. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Check out some of my merch on my spread shop. This very specific design, the Catch, Kill, Cook, Eat, has been discontinued last year. I'm gonna put this design back up for just a little bit and then I'll take it back down. And then I got new merch that is coming because of spring. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, so check it out and uh, I will see you in the next video.
Oh, actually, before I go, um, if you want to watch the squirrel processing video, it probably popped up in this corner earlier in the video. Otherwise, it might pop up right now. Uh, but if you want to see it, I have links in the description and in the comments down below. So check that out. It's a whole playlist of just videos of me processing animals. And so if you're interested in that, go check it out and enjoy. Just let me know if you like it or not. I'll try to make more videos like this. In the future, I'm gonna try to get like a, like a rabbit and then another rooster. I really, really badly want to get a piglet you know, like a small baby piglet and butcher that. It's gonna suck, you know, doing that and reading the comments is, are gonna suck too. But hey, if I'm trying to become self-reliant, I need to know how to do stuff like that. And sometimes you'll butcher a pig. Sometimes you need to, uh, but most of the time you probably would want to raise it until it, get, it's, until it gets bigger and then you butcher it. But if I start small, it'll be a lot easier for me to handle. And then later on down the line, once I do have my own property, and once I'm able to raise larger pigs, I'll then raise them to then butcher them. But now I can't raise a pig in my area. And so I'll just buy a small piglet and then butcher it. And I'll know where the organs are, know how it looks, how to butcher it. And uh, yeah, it will be a very interesting time. <laughs> and a really cool video too so yeah subscribe so you don't miss out on those upcoming possible videos in the future <laughs> all right i'll see you next time <clears throat>